Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV. Today I have with me the star of the most recent episode of The Collection. He's going to be performing live on pay-per-view this Sunday from the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. My good friend Joe Bonamassa. What's going on, dude? How you doing, Mark? You know that, that, that live from Nerdville East, it seems like the kids are really enjoying that, you know? Hey man, they're sitting through an hour and 13 minutes of it, you know, and uh, they're begging for more. It's good, wholesome fun. And, and I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Um, apparently, I own every guitar ever made, and there's none for anybody else. That's like, what I hear. Every guitar that comes off the Gibson line, I it's buy. Yeah. I just pay. It's the same thing with Jay Leno and the cars. That's, he owns every automobile ever made. That's why we, we still use horse and buggy. Yeah. Save some for Seinfeld, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the episode was amazing. We had a lot of fun that day. It almost felt like two days because we were there so freaking long. But uh, lots of good stuff, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm glad everybody's enjoying it. we got a lot to talk about here. Um, First off, this Sunday, you're doing a live stream pay-per-view show from the Ryman Auditorium. Can you tell us a little bit about what people can expect with that? Well, we've we've already made tour shirts. Joe Bonamassa, Fall Tour 2020, one show. One day. <laughs> Sunday, 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 September 20th. And, well, you know, we have a new album that we made in Abbey Road. And normally the way the cycle works is you make a record and you go tour and you start promoting it on the road by playing the songs. Since we don't have a tour and most likely my career is over and I'll be operating an antique store in Wyoming sometime in the next 18 months, um, for real, um, we're going to promote the record by doing this pay-per-view. And, you know, we did this thing um, called Fueling Musicians uh, a few months ago. We, you know, we're now over $325,000, thanks to the generosity of people like Gibson. And, you know, so there's a charitable element to this, um, to this concert. So we're going to keep this, you know, this, this Fueling Musicians initiative going. And that's, that's where, you know, bands, artists, anybody who tours can sign up and, get a thousand dollar check and a five hundred dollar gas card and um it's it's just to help them go back and you know restart their lives after being shut down so all of it is kind of and then we're gonna play the record all the way through start to finish and then a few songs from 20 years ago and 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 then and then 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 the next generation is going to make my job obsolete he's going to take over for for a for an after show party and then you'll see what how the future is going to look of the blues so that's that's basically what we're doing so you're going to premiere the whole brand new album live. It's like a live album release party as well that this would be before the, when does the album come out? The, the album comes out October 23rd. So it's a month before and um, we're going to do it in order. We've never done anything like that before. Usually I just do like four or five songs, you know, cause yeah. we're like, you know, if, if we don't get to slow gin. It, <laughs> the, yeah. People the, want refunds. The people in DeKalb, Illinois are not going to be happy. Okay, so um, so we, we ended up we always ended up putting four or five new songs off the record. Then we do the other, the old stuff. Um, but this one is a little bit different. Um, a, there's no audience except for like two thousand cardboard cutouts of people's faces, and you know we've never did the whole album in its entirety um, to debut it. And and it's actually been a fun rabbit hole to go down because we're we're. You know, like some songs that you do in the studio, we never had any intention to play that live. Now we have to do it because we've actually yeah. wrote the check. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. It's been a really good. It's been a really good experience, um, and and uh, it's nice to get the band back together and play in anger again. It's been a yeah. while, it's months. Yeah. You know. Speaking of this uh, new album, I know you're like you're chasing a a, a pretty major music industry record in terms yeah. of number ones. Yeah. Uh, you have how many consecutive number ones right now? Basically, I have 23 number one Billboard blues records. Yeah. And by sheer attrition and time and volume of product and the, 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 the wonderful, you know, loyalty of my fans over the years, we've had 23 number one blues records, which according to Billboard and, and other, other sources, is the all-time record for the blues category, um, which if you ever think like who holds the all-time record in the blues category, Joe Bonamassa, it's, it's, it's unfathomable, you know? Cool. All-time record 
for most number ones in any category, I believe is held by George Strait, which is, I believe, 24. So we're close. And I, you know, to me, the, 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 the stats don't really mean anything, but it's, it's really a testament to how wonderful the fans have been to, you know, to me for 20 years. And they've gone along on this journey, both on a live sense and then on a side project. But, but you know, it, it's, um, it's, just a, it's just an odd stat. And I know, I know the people that really dislike me really are gonna dislike me more knowing that from, from, from me saying that, but it's true. And, so and if this one goes number one, you tie George Strait for the most all time yes. number one releases. I believe that is the I believe that is the 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 the, the case. And he has twenty four in the country category. Um and, and which takes a lot more sales to be number one. You know, again, I always say like, you know, number one blues record is great, but but the criteria for that, it's it's not like it's not like, you know, you're you're going up against Justin Bieber. You know, yeah. this is this, this is not pop music. It's it's yeah. it's a it's a it's a niche market, but still a pretty incredible uh, accomplishment, and just uh, shows the amount of work uh, that you've been able to release. I mean, does this mean retirement? Are you still got a few more years here, or you is know, this going to be forced retirement because of all this? You know, BB King always used to say, "Like the fans are going to tell me when to retire, aka they're not going to show up." I, I don't know. I, I mean, we've talked about this off the air and, and, and we've talked about, and I've speculated and I, you know, I've gone through bouts of like, you know, you know, like denial, depression. It was like, what's the 12 stages of grief? You know, it depends. Like when we come back, we're going to, we're going to attempt to come back. If there's no audience left, then, then I guess I'm going to retire. I mean, like you, you just, there's nothing else you can do. You, you know, it's not, it's, it, it's, 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 you're not going to force people to come out to the show. And, and I, I, I think there's still going to be an audience left for music. I think there's going to be a, pen, a slight pent up demand for it, but there's going to be a sheer volume of acts. And if you, if you've hung out at sound check here in Nashville for any, any yeah. period of time, there are people literally chomping at the bit. They can't wait to grab their Pelican cases and get on a, get in a van. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 um, you're going to have, a huge volume of artists touring all at the same time as soon as they get the green light in any which way or form. They're going to, you know, they, well, they'd be like, you know, what can they do half house? Well, that doesn't make sense for acts like myself and, 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 and ones that are carry production, but the ones that, that don't carry production, they, they can go out and do okay with a half house. So it's, it's, um, it, it's going to be an interesting rollout as it all comes back. Yeah. How are you feeling about 2021 so far? As far as in terms uh, of rolling out and getting those getting those trucks back on the road. I'd like to get down. Well, I, I'll tell you what I'm I'm bullish about about 2021 is the diet worked. I'm down 15 pounds. I'd like You're to ready get, to go. I, I'd like to I'd like to lose another five. Which staying at home eating the same thing every day twice really helps. Um, I really think I'm going to lose the extra five. I don't really see us coming back until maybe summer fall of next year and that's a, 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 a an if a, a, a definitely if if the circumstances are right for a comeback because a you want everybody can't put people in danger if there's no vaccine there's so many you know things and you know like it used to be used to be where you could tour state to state and and it seemed like a united states of america now there's no United States of America. So like if we have dates in California, they may, the, the, the regulations there, you know, being an ex-Angelino, me, um, the, 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 the regulations there could be, you know, you don't even bother touring California for a minute, you know, until it, it, you know, and it's like, it's going to be very interesting how it looks state to state because it's just like, well, it's a gig, it's a gig, you know, just, set up in Pasadena or you set up in Tucson. It's the same thing. It may not be that. No. Yeah. Well, speaking of getting these other bands back out on the road, let's talk a little bit more about the Fueling Musicians program. You guys launched that in like late April, right around the beginning of May. Um, how can people donate to that? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, part of the, the, uh, the show is going to that, but if people want to get involved in helping musicians out, how can they support the cause? Well, we, you know, we make it real easy. You go to keepingthebluesalive.org, I believe, or .org. Um, and um, you just go to the Keeping the Blues Alive website, and there's a real easy, you just donate. And, and you know, all the money, I mean, even the money, the, 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 the money we, we donated 
before, you know, fueling musicians, all the money goes to, to music programs and schools and kids and education. Now it's really like we're, we're singularly focused on this thing because it, the, the crisis is urgent. And yeah, I know $1,500 isn't going to move the ball and, and, and let everybody sit at home for a year, but it's going to help, you know? And the money that's been raised so far for fueling musicians has really helped artists that you've heard of and, and, you know, like pay their bills. And, you know, I hope they, they just squirrel away that, that gas card. And, and if they're going from Dallas to Chicago for their first show, you know, like the first thousand miles is on me. It's really important because a lot of times what happens is you don't think about the cost involved in just getting to the first gig. You know, I mean, if you if you live in New York City and your first gig is in Tulsa, because that's how I had the idea. I just remember the 20 years ago or 25 years ago, I had to tell the tour manager, take his foot off the gas because we were going through too much fuel. And, you know, because we were deadheading from New York City to Tulsa and didn't have enough money to get there. So yeah. like, it, it's really it's really critical now that, you know, we, we look at bands um, and, and venues and things like that. Um, and, and really help preserve them because they really got they really got cut off at the very worst time right before the summer which a lot of acts make all of their money yeah no. and the the venues who even during the salad years as they say in business you know did okay but they don't have operating capital for six months they don't have they don't have an, enough where they can just sit idle for a year or two so you're going to look at the troubadour the legendary troubadour or, or the mint or, or, or any of these great small 200 to 500 seaters and they may just be gone, you know, and it's, and it's, it's just because of the sheer nature of just nobody could ever predict that an entire industry wide shutdown from top to bottom would ever happen like this. No, but now here we are still talking about it. Still talking about it. Well, yep. there's something else a lot of people were talking about after your episode of the collection and that's the new Joe Bonamassa Epiphone Black Beauty with the Epiphone master built tuners on it. And when yeah. we filmed that day, we had we had the guitars there. What's your impression of the Epiphone? You know, I could tell you this. I see more of the Epiphones than I do the regular Joe Bonamassa signature guitars. There's just by sheer volume, there's yeah. thousands of them. And they usually show up in meet and greets when we used to have these things were back in that era. Yeah. The day humans used to interact. Yeah. Remember that? It was a, Vaguely. It, it, it was a bygone era. It's like steampunk. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I see a lot of the Epiphones come in through the meet and greets and I sign a lot of them. I will say this about Epiphones. When you buy an Epiphone product of any, you know, any skew, you get the same, you buy the same guitar. I don't know how they do it with the quality control, the QC. Every guitar is identical. So when I get the prototypes of the Black Beauties or the Amos Vs or, you know, whatever we do, the, the Norm Burst we did last year, I know that that guitar that I sign off on will be replicated 1500 times. And it's just, it's just, it's an amazing consistency that they get. Um, you know, in the factories there. And, you know, it's just, it's a great value for the money. I mean, like for under a thousand dollars, you could rule the world with these things, you know, and I'm, I try not to paint my name all over them because I know there's, 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 there's some dissenting opinions about me. It's fine. It's just a good guitar for $899. And it's based on a real 58 that I play live. And I'm not really known as a custom guy, but I always said, if I found the right one, it was, you know, a lot of your favorite records were made on a, on a custom versus yeah. a standard. So, you know, I mean, it, I, I would say, well, if I find the right one, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy it and, you know, make the pickup in phase and refret it. So it's based on that. And they did a great job. They really did a great job. Yeah. Um, obviously you own every guitar ever made that, you know, they're every, all your, not, there's not a, not a guitar available here on eighth Avenue South. There's yeah. Car is empty. Rumble seats empty. It's, it's just nothing but string swing hangers and, and 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 just you know little wire hanging. I bought even bought the memorabilia. There's no memorabilia for anybody. All gone. But All that gone. being said, what's what's still on the list? Is there something that you're still questing for? Is it just on a whatever turns up and 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 sparks you, or is there something like I don't have one of these and I'm still looking? 
You know, it's interesting because I, I mean, this year I've really concentrated on filling a few gaps in the collection, believe it or not. Um, like I just bought a floral telly, 1969 cool. blue floral. I've never seen one in the wild. And I know they exist and I didn't have one. So it goes with the set of the Paisley that's the late yeah. 60s Paisley stuff. You know, as, as far as, you know, you know, Gibson is concerned, you know, any, any custom, obviously any solid color from the fifties or sixties is extremely rare. You know, you, you, if you're like a white 335 or, a, you know, black 355 shows up. Yeah. You, you want to, you want to be involved in that. Um, you know, the, the, um, it's very, you know, it's, it's very interested to see um, where the market goes as far as a collector and the economy and everything. I, I think it's going to be fine. I think the money's still around. I think it's just in different places. If you invested in toilet paper and paper towels, you, you, your ship came in, came yeah. in, you yeah. know? Um, but, you know, the thing is, um, yeah, I, 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 I still, even though I'm not socially actively still in the game with the guitar safari, because there is no guitar safari, it's just we're not traveling. I mean, I still have a little network of things that I find, you know what I mean? I just, you know, I just bought a black uh, grammar Johnny Cash model, which is cool. Love those grammars. I love, I, the I love them too. And, 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 you know, I've never seen one in black. So yeah, that's cool. It came, you know, it came, it finds you, the stuff kind of finds you. And then, you know, I bought a, an old conversion uh, 56 that was done by strings and things in Memphis that turned out to be this guy, Paul Cannon's guitar from the band. You posted guitar. that on Instagram this morning, I did, right? Yeah. I did. And, and, it, and it's, you know, it's just, Little things like that, not little, they're not little, but, but, you know, things like that that are interesting with stories, not just stuff. I'm over the whole stuff thing, you know? It's, they, everything has to have a story and a purpose. Yeah. Will there ever be a Karina Explorer in the Joe V collection? It has to be a black and white picture of an old lady or an old man playing it. Um, my criteria for Explorers is high because yeah. I understand how dicey that 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 can get um i know i don't i say i'm you know i'm into tony bacon book um from years ago i don't know i was i don't even know what i was doing was i like, like drunk or something when i was doing the interview kind of like i am now um no it, the uh i was in the tony bacon book say i would never ever ever own a sunburst less ball in my life i, I was like well, i was like at, at the time it was just on a tanium, you know and so I can never say never because the way my life works and how I kind of have feelers around the, the world as far as finding these things and how they find me, you know, like yeah. people want to end up here. And um, so I never say never, but it's, it's unlikely because they're so rare and to find a real one that's undisputed is it's a once in a lifetime. So. Yeah. Well, I know you got to get back to rehearsing here. Just a reminder for everyone, this Sunday, September 20th, Joe's going to be doing a live pay-per-view event from the Ryman Auditorium. If people want tickets for that, just at JoeBonamassa.com or? JoeBonamassa.com and the, the whole, it's right on the header, you know, pay-per-view. And, and you know, we make it easy to, to, to buy ashtrays and, and, and bobbleheads and pay-per-view, you know. So. Cool. And this, it's I, a, I just have to say, system. this has to be, how many times has it been that you've only played one show in a summer? How old were you in the last time you played one show in the summer? Or has that ever happened? No, this would be the first time. This would be the first time. Be the first time in 31 years. This is the, this is the most time you've had off since you were a kid. Since I'm 14 been years old, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, um, we used to take the winters off because I used to have to go to school and I was tutored. Uh, but then we would tour in the summer, but back when I was in Bloodline, back when I had my solo band, and then when I transitioned to a solo artist, um, we would still do shows, just not, I mean, we weren't doing 200 shows, but we would do 20 or 30. Um, and that was, that was just to get by. And then, um, yeah, this is the longest gap. It will be the longest gap between gigs. I mean, it'll minimum will be a year between shows. I mean, March 12th was our last show. With, with an audience and a full band. And then now we're talking about September 20th. We don't have anything on the books until April of next year. That's with an if and a but, you yeah. know? So it'll be a year. So, I mean, it, it, it's good to take a year off. I'm lucky enough I can do it. Um, but it's also, um, it's also odd, you know, to be put out to pasture, not by, 
not by your mother or wife, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, if you're a Joe Bonamassa fan, this is your one chance to see him live uh, this year. And they'll be playing a whole new album, Royalty, in its entirety. When does the album come out again? October? October 23rd. The album will be out. And um, yeah, everything that's uh, after that, it's, uh, you know, it's just Instagram posts and, and, uh, and, and good old fashioned arguing with the trolls. There you go, man. Well, dude, I appreciate you uh, stopping by. And uh, I know you got rehearsing to do. I got a feeling George Strait's about to get tied here. Uh, on the 24 number ones. Hopefully you know there's still a, hopefully there's still a music business uh, around for you to to take the record. You know, we can all rest easy knowing that George Strait doesn't give a shit. <laughs> this is true. Dude, good talking to you as always, buddy. Have a great uh, show on Sunday. I'll be watching. Thanks, man.